Welcome to a new episode of the Cap Podcast Consumer Ammunition Tactics Podcast. I got a special guest in the building today. I got BR, the CEO, with me. I'm going to read his bio, and we're going to get straight into it. So BR, the CEO, he's a 20-year-old entrepreneur who dropped out the first semester of college. And within a year, he created a six-figure brand. He teaches other entrepreneurs how to leverage their credit to start any business, mainly the rental car game. Uh, welcome to the podcast, bro. How you doing? Yes, sir. Appreciate you for having me. I'm doing great. I'm doing good. Feeling energized, ready to get it. Good, good, good. Definitely, definitely. So I read a brief bio. Obviously, you know, you're young, 20 year old entrepreneur. Can you give us a little bit more of a story about yourself? Yeah, man. So it, it really all started. I've been an entrepreneur all my life and an athlete. So, okay. of course, uh, it's a lot of kids out here that want to go to the league. But in my situation, I really got to college and saw really what that was about, and I didn't like it. Okay, so being that I was an entrepreneur all my life, and never, no, nobody knew about that in high school. I'm, I'm the athlete. I'm track football all day. That's what everybody knew me for. So I get to college, um, see what college ball is like. I don't like it at all. Mm -hmm. um, so then I'm trying to find ways how to make money without having money while I'm in college. So for one, I had um, shoe customization uh, uh, business. So I would custom, I make custom shoes, right? So that was one business. Then I had school, then I had football, okay? And then I was trying to find another way to make money so that I could drop out, okay? I couldn't drop out. If I were to tell my parents I wanna drop out and I have nothing going, that's gonna make me look bad. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to start making some income while I was in college so that I could drop out and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm making money uh, from, and I could do that. So with that being said, I kind of found a credit route so I could build my, my credit, get funding, and then invest that credit. Okay, so now once I learn how to build my credit, guess what I could do? I could teach how to build credit, and that's where the teaching part came from. So now that I'm teaching how to build credit, I'm getting anchors. Now I'm repairing my credit. OK, so guess what I can do for you? Repair your credit. So yeah. now I just build teaching. I build my credit. I'm building business credit at this time. And I'm uh, if I I don't think I said teaching already. If I did. OK, I'm teaching. And now I'm repairing credit at the same time. So that's what three income streams right there mm -hmm. straight out of college. So as soon as I dropped out, I went and got a rental unit. It's like a um, small two car garage. OK, and I put a paint body tenant in there now. Um, let's say a, a year down the line, that paint body tenant, guess what he does? Help me with Rex in my rental car business. So it's just credit, like turn over, turning over my credit, just, just maxing out credit cards, paying them back um, off my ROI, and then just keep on, keep on running it, keep on running it, keep flipping it, keep flipping it. Definitely. So that's, that's, how, that's how I got rolling. Okay, most definitely. So I know a lot of people that's listening to the podcast, they might be hearing your accomplishments, if they didn't hear your age, they'd, be, they'd probably think you were older. So I want the interview to be structured where we're going to talk about credit and then we're going to talk about the car rental stuff. But mm -hmm. before we even get into that, I want to just talk about mindset because you don't have a typical mindset of a 20 year old. So did you have any mentors in your life? Like where does your mindset even come from? Like why did you just want so much more in life? It's really uh, my dad always like in the car just be preaching to me. Like all all day back then, I didn't listen to it. Like I listened to it. <laughs> He'll be like, read and stuff. Like what what kid wants to read? Yeah. And it, this one, I was young, bro. So it was really implanted. So young, yeah. <laughs> so saying. it's like when I grew up, it's like now it's just naturally coming to me. It's like I was born with it. It's just it's just a fire. Like I can't. I literally cannot sit down. He'd be like, take a break, bro. I'm like, I, if I take a break. What are these four businesses going to do? They're not going to yeah. move because I'm building them, right? I'm, I'm the backbone of the business right now. Uh -huh. So that is just, it's just a willing to win and like just having things, being able to buy things that I was never able to buy or yeah. seeing other people have things that I was never able to have. Like yeah. when I was younger or my parents wasn't able to get me or even seeing my parents not have what they want at the age that they are. Mm -hmm. So that's what keep me going, like really pushing me and also doubters. So people, a lot of people that's watching, they have a lot of doubters, but you can use that as fuel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like that's what I do. Somebody tell me, oh, you can't, you can't do this. Oh, you can't get a Lambo at 21, 23 without a degree. Why I can't? So mm-hmm. that's that's when I turn it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You no, know, like just just take the a- adversity, take all of that, all of that stuff and turn it into fuel. And mm-hmm. that's how you keep going. Definitely. Okay. Dope, dope. You said your dad was in your ear. Do you remember any particular books that you read that kind of helped shift your mindset? I didn't read, bro. Oh, you didn't read? I didn't know. No, I hated reading. I tried it. I tried it. I tried a little bit, but I just could never do it. I could never do it. I have recently started reading. Like now that I'm 20, I have kind of started reading. And that's Think and Grow Rich. That's about the only book that I read. And I still haven't finished it, bro. It's oh. like something, something with me and reading that it just don't sit right. Like, I, just, I don't know. I don't know why. If it's because I'm young, I don't know. Yeah. I really don't know. You do audiobooks or podcasts, like anything? No, no, no. I just do these four businesses, the teaching, credit, um, the rental cars, and then Airbnb, and that's it. Okay. Oh, you on Airbnb as well? A little bit. That's okay. like, it's more of a side hustle. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. so but it's, it's still something. Okay. It's not. Yeah, yeah. It's some type of income. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, so I want to talk about the foundation, which is which we both know is credit. You know, you can use a credit game, get you a business credit card, zero percent interest. Your Airbnb, you furnish it for free. Get you um, Bank of America business auto loans. You got your Turo stuff for free. So let's talk about the foundation, which is credit. So you said you started fixing your own credit, and then you started fixing other people's credit. Like, how did you actually get introduced to credit? So. Um... Like I said, in college, I needed money without having money. So I discovered okay. Graham Stephan on, on YouTube and I started building my credit. So I started getting secured credit cards. Then um, I started getting unsecured credit cards, which was giving me inquiries. Mm-hmm. So when I try to go apply for some some other things and in- inquiries tells you tells the lender how much money you're trying to get. If you're getting too much money, meaning you have too many inquiries, guess what? You're a high risk, meaning you're begging for money. And they're not going to lend you any more money because you have inquiries. So I'm like, okay, I need to get these off. So then you start getting them off. And now I can teach you how to get them off, which was, which is the same thing I was, I, I've been doing, um, just repairing credit. So then I um, find a, my cousin hit me up on the phone was like, you know, you can repair credit, but just using these systems. So then I got the systems and started repairing for family members for free. A lot of people come to me and ask who they, how do they get started? The systems I was using was dispute B. It was like ninety nine dollars a month, mm-hmm. and I would just take that and repair people's credit that's that's around me. Started getting results. Started posting results online. That's all you have to do to market. Just post the results online, and now you got people coming to you to get their credit repaired. And then you don't have to know how to repair credit. All you do is use the systems. That's all you need. And then once you get the system down, you hire employees to run your systems. Mm-hmm. Or virtual assistance at that. So it's your 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 cost to repair credit is super, super low. All you need is one system, one VA, or you can just use a system and repair it yourself. So that's how the whole credit repair process got going. And then I fluctuated to business credit. Now that I built my personal credit super strong, now we're on the business credit. Now we're about to leverage this personal credit to this business credit. So we don't have to worry about our personal credit, DTI, all of that extra stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. So now all I use is business credit and I can build 10 LLCs and just leverage my personal credit and keep deleting these inquiries because it's not yeah. attached to, to open account on my personal. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's how I, that's how I got the ball rolling with the credit. And now I'm on Instagram. People see me with a million cars and all of that literally started from a Discover Insecure credit card, $200 mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. So people don't believe me when I say that, but <laughs> it's the truth yeah. i mean you gotta start somewhere and that's where it started i have been doing it for a while but i still had to start somewhere see definitely. what i'm saying so, definitely yeah. definitely so with your report i mean you were i mean you're young so i'm assuming you didn't have like collections and all of that was it just inquiries you had to remove yeah just just okay. inquiries yeah okay. and do you have a thin file you have to get like primaries and things like that or yeah most definitely i, okay. I, I had nothing like okay. literally yeah. a, a Blank credit report. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay. there's nothing on there. I built it from scratch. So yeah. So now I know how to build credit along with repair it. Gotcha. So 
Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. So when we talk about systems, because I know some of the listeners, they, they also have credit repair businesses. Mm-hmm. You do, you also help people fix their credit still, or was that just something you did in the past? Yeah, for sure. It's a business. Yeah, that's that's one of my income streams, just the, the whole credit repair. But um, all I really have to do now to this point in my credit repair business is just talk to people on the phone. Because mm-hmm. nine times out of the 10, these customers are coming because they know me. So mm-hmm. they only want to hear me. So that's the only thing I do in my business. I just close clients. Meet When I say close, I mean get on the phone with them. Either they want credit repair or they don't. If they don't, I put them in the follow-up section. If they do, mm-hmm. we lock them in. I give them to my VAs to, to work with them, communicate with them from here on out. Yeah. So um, that's how I run that part. Okay. Can we talk? Let's talk about the importance. I like what you said about you hopping on the calls and stuff. Because I know when I first started, I used to have my VA handling all the calls. But then I post so much content. It's like they want to hear from, you know, the, per- right. the face of the business. So I right. realized like I was kind of losing business just because I didn't want to necessarily talk to people. Can we can we elaborate on the importance of yeah, doing that? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, right now, yeah, I'm going to be on the phone, but at some point, I'm not going to I'm not going to be accessible. I'm the business yeah. owner. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm just supposed to structure this stuff and put everything together and be the business owner. I'm not even supposed to be an employee in my business. You see what I'm saying? So at some mm. point, I even tell these people on Instagram at some point. I'm not going to be part of this business. Mm. I'm going to be the owner of this business. So you guys will not be having access to me forever. So I tell them, get it while you can. Get me, get in contact with me while y'all can. Um, it, it goes back to where I was charging $30 to give the same information I'm giving today. Now it's $1,000 to get a mentorship. Mm. Same information. Mm-hmm. But people don't, people don't listen like that. Same situation. If I'm telling y'all that, get this information in and get in contact with me right now later on i'm not going to be accessible exactly. so that that goes for anybody being a business owner you're not supposed to you don't have to work inside of your business that's that's really my view on a business i'm not supposed to be an employee inside of my business mm-hmm. you're not you're not leaving the nine to five just to hop in your own business and still be running working the nine to five mm-hmm. yeah you you have more freedom but at the end of the day you're still working the nine to five even more as an entrepreneur. I work 12 hours a day as an entrepreneur. So you're going to be working more than a nine to five if you're, if you're really into it. Definitely. So, yeah, that's my take on that. Okay, definitely. So let's talk about, let's talk about systems because you said you got, I don't know how many VAs you got. Um, you have them in a follow-up system if they're not ready right away. Can we talk about the systems you use, the process of getting the VA? Let's talk about that. Yeah, for sure. So I have Lead Dragon. That's what I have for my credit repair business. Okay. And then I have credit repair business suite for my um BR CEO and for my whole personal brand stuff. You about to ask me something? No, I was just saying, I was saying like, because because some people that listen, they want to figure out, you know, how to be more profitable within their own credit repair business. So you use Lead Dragon, which is good for, you know, the text messages, emails. And things website. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The whole website. Exactly. As exactly. far as marketing, get it, uh, retargeting clients. It's yeah. it's a whole funnel. Thing. It, it's literally a funnel where you put all of your clients into one funnel and they come streamlining down and make everything easier as far as messaging. It's just an organization system. Um, you can retarget everybody, you can follow up. I, I use it to structure my business, so I plug in VAs with my lead dragon account. So you have round one disputes, round two, round mm-hmm. three, and so forth. So I have my VA just sliding clients over mm-hmm. whatever round they get to and they send automated messages saying, hey, you're round one, even e- emails, hey, your round one has been sent or mm-hmm. um, you, you got new inquiries this month. If you get any more, you're gonna be charged. That's what I have a communication VA for to mm-hmm. handle all of the talking that I don't have to do my VA know I train my VA. So if I say, hey, um, it, my, my VA knows specifically which message to leave alone to let me handle. They mm-hmm. won't even tell me that the message is there. They'll just leave it there. They know they handle the basic, the, mm-hmm. the small stuff. Hey, like if a client asks, hey, what's the update on my account? They'll, he'll go to Credit Repair Cloud, download it, and send it to the client. I don't have to do any of that while I'm out here working on these cards. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I really automated the credit repair business besides the part of me hopping on the phone. That's about it. And mm-hmm. all I do is just overlook and make sure everything's running smooth. Gotcha. 
And how long have you had the credit repair business? Since I dropped out, so about yeah. about a year and a half now. Okay. Yeah, I started I started the credit repair business three months after I dropped out. So yeah, about a year and a half. Okay. So how what was the timeline between the credit repair business and then like uh, I don't know if you just said car rentals or Turo? Or, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's car rentals in general. Um, okay. People ask me, do I do Turo? Yes, yeah, I do whole rental car game, yeah. brokering, all of that. But yeah, the timeline, basically, I use the credit to invest into the rental cars. So yeah. when I learned how to build my credit, I had credit limits now. So now that I took these credit limits, I put it into these rental car uh, down payments. So I'll take a car and just put the down payment with the credit card. But the time limit from credit repair to the rental cars, I would say it took about to get to where I'm at now. Let's say when you started, let's say both, when you started and then, yeah. Okay, when I started, it was probably six months later after I got like a few credit cards, i say it was about six months later because I was moving quick. When yeah. I got started, I was moving quick. Six so months is pretty quick sound, too. Yeah, it might yeah. not sound real, but it was literally <laughs> like when I got a credit repair business, it was like six months after to yeah. where I got my first two cars and just started running them. Um, and then from... From when I started the credit repair business or when I dropped out, is it's been about a year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half now to get to where I'm at today. Okay. I have so many cars because I have methods to joint venture and get other okay. people's cars. Okay, okay. We're gonna we gonna talk about the car rental stuff because I feel okay, like you, okay. you're real, real passionate about the car rental stuff. We've got to get the you know foundation with the credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um as far as the credit. You said six months until you started into Turo. Like, what what kind of cards were you getting? Like, what was your method? What was your method toward okay. this? Okay, so I had a Discover It secure credit card. Um, yeah, I got I got this in college. Okay, so I started building my credit in college because I knew I was going to drop out. Like two hundred one, two hundred, two hundred, two okay. hundred flat. I okay. gave them two. I gave Discover two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I waited like three months. Then I got a Capital One secure car for like five i put 500 on that i waited six months got my got my 200 dollars back from discover never got my capital one money back just raised my limit like 200 okay. um so now i have those two cards then i got an apple card the little titanium one that one was like i think they gave me like six thousand on there so i was excited for that so i took those cards invested it um and then at this time i got amex amex changed my life so Amex basically, um, they I think they gave me, I think they gave me six k off of a personal car, and then a few months later, I say about, I say about three months later, they gave me a business credit card with like nine thousand, and that was surprising to me because I kept getting approved for these those low limit credit cards. Yeah. So then they finally came in and gave me something big. So um, I really just took those and started investing, and mm -hmm. then once I. All you got to do is just invest your credit, get the return, pay off your credit or get the profits, pay off the credit cards. Credit card be like $25 a month. Yeah. Most of them, the ones that I had, it was like $20, $25 a month. So with the profits that I was getting from either a rental car or the, the little unit that I told you I got, that was easy to pay for it. A credit card, mm -hmm. I, was either, I, I was even paying $500 at a time just to go ahead and get that debt out the way and reuse the credit card. Mm. so yeah it's just a rinse and repeat type of method okay definitely and you were talking about like raising your limits were you, you doing stuff like manufacturer spending or like how are you raising your limits i was raising my limits by maxing my credit cards out so a lot of people yeah. think that's bad to max your credit card out that's a myth okay when i max my credit card out and pay it off at that i don't yeah. just max it out and just leave it i max it out on let's say a down payment on a car i max it out then the, with the return that I get on the car, I just pay it all down, like pay the whole thing down. So now the bank is thinking this dude needs more money mm -hmm. and they do it because they keep raising your limit because these people want you to pay more interest. Yeah. More interest. So the more debt you have, the longer you're going to be paying interest. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just kept maxing the credit cards out, paying it down. This is what happened with me and Amex. I maxed the credit card out. Uh, and then they, they lowered my limit. And then I called them. I was like, why did y'all lower my limit? They was like, oh, because your limit's too high. So pay $2,000. I paid $2,000. They raised my limit. 
Mm. <laughs> so I'm like, that's all y'all want me to do is just yeah. max my cards out, pay it, and run it back. So mm -hmm. now I'm figuring out now I can go ahead and just keep maxing these cards out and pay, and doing these doing these companies well by paying them the money back and they'll raise your limit for you. Yeah. Um, even even Apple Apple does it automatically for me. Mm -hmm. Like it just got raised to like 11k. I think it was like six before it raised to like 11k, and then because I keep maxing the card out, I need more yeah. money. And yeah, you go to them and tell them, "Hey, I need more money." Especially if you're paying interest, oh, they're yeah. gonna give it to you. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna give it to you as long as you're not doing it every month. I say wait. I say wait every with Apple. You can do Apple every three months with any other credit card. Wait six months. Okay. Apple is super good with raising it every three months. I don't know why. Well, I do know why because the interest is stupid high. That's why Apple does it so quick. So like I said, they just want the interest. So mm -hmm. as long as you're maxing these credit cards out and paying it back, good. Because they just want they just want their money. That's it. Okay, that's money right there. I hope people are definitely taking notes. Yeah. Before we sure. transition into the Toro. So I got a couple more questions just on the credit mm -hmm. side for the people. Yeah. So number one. Let's 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 address the people that maybe they don't do credit repair or anything. Let's say someone's listening to it. Um, they're young because they your age as well. They thinking like, okay, I don't know much about credit. You know, I'm young. I got a thin file. Where do I start? What would you recommend that they start? I would recommend starting with YouTube. So okay. YouTube doesn't. Um, they they're not going to give you the full game. But like I said, I got started with Graham Stephan. So he taught the the secure credit card method that's how you get into credit a lot of people don't even know how to start their credit so yeah. i just say trade lines okay trade lines is just you being on somebody else's credit card that has good credit so their history can report off to your uh credit report mm -hmm. and the discover secure credit cards mm -hmm. okay discover it capital one um amex i mean not amex um navy fed amex probably do have one but navy fed just start building small Giving, giving the bank your money so they can give you money back in a credit card form. Mm -hmm. That's when you start building your credit, accumulating your credit. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, for sure. Start with YouTube, get that get that, that basics down. And then everybody on YouTube is going to push you towards a, a, a um, course or something or a mentor. Yeah. 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 They're always going to do that. So take that information, go ahead and invest into the course. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where they get the real sauce. No, no real sauce is going to be free out here. Mm -hmm. So that's just what it is. So um, it's plenty of people on here. I tell people, I always do their research before they invest into somebody because yeah. people will make it look good online and will finesse you on the back end. Mm -hmm. So um, go ahead and invest into your time as far as YouTube first, get the credit basics. Once you get the basics, Take it up a notch and invest into somebody that knows what they're doing. That's that's coming back from where you're trying to go. Mm -hmm. So if you if you're looking at me, you see other rental cars and um, Airbnb or a teeth to credit game. That's who you want to invest into. Mm -hmm. Don't invest into somebody that that hasn't been where you're trying to go. Like exactly. don't listen to your parents if they don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They they may. They may, they're your parents, so whatever they tell you, you you're gonna take into consideration. But at the same time, you gotta look at where your parents have been, right? And then think about that. And that's how you that's how I really invest in the people. Like you just gotta see what they've been through, what, what they have going on for themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. no, no, that's good advice. So you specifically, I know you mentioned mentorship and your mentorship. Do you cover these stuff like more sauce on credit, or is it just more of Car rentals? What yeah, is so of course my main niche is the rental cars. So we teach rental cars first. Then I go to business credit. Then we go to uh, personal credit. Then I teach how I run my credit repair business for free using um, affiliate links and stuff like that. Gotcha. And then we teach pri I teach private rentals. And then from there, I teach a little bit on how to repair credit yourself. I don't really do credit repair myself. Um, it's just pointless if we have a system. Yeah. Uh, what else? That's about it that's it yeah okay so i mean if, if they're listening they can definitely tap into you for the mentorship yeah, yeah, yeah. as far as okay do you have it like ebooks uh, e-courses or it's, it's mainly yeah, mentorship i have one ebook on airbnb okay yeah so i don't i don't i don't have any rental car courses on um on rental car i mean any ebooks on rental cars because that's like 
bro, the the rental car game soft that I have is like out of this world. Cause yeah. you know, I got start I got started at 18 years old. Yeah. What 18 year old is going to Bank of America and Chase getting an auto loan? Uh, I ain't heard have, it, man. Unless they have a strong, powerful um cosigner, it's yeah. it's not it's not easy to go to those banks. So I found my own route, right? Okay. I use in-house finance to find my own route. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's really why I don't have a ebook or any courses or anything. That's strictly for mentees. Gotcha. So, yeah. Okay, definitely. So last question before we transition into the car rental stuff, you know, do all that. So let's let's get some information for the people that have credit repair businesses. Maybe mm-hmm. they want to go from, maybe they want to take their business to uh, five figures or they just want to make an extra couple thousand dollars a month. What would you recommend for credit repair businesses? Maybe something that you've seen in your business that has been effective that you think people should be doing. Maybe a systems, maybe you know, VAs, what is it? Okay, so me, I get paid from my VAs. So if anybody out there need credit repair VAs, DM me on Instagram, BR CEO. So I get paid $60. And this is how I run my, my stuff for free. Okay. I get paid for my VA $60 every two weeks from every person that I refer. Same thing for you. If you were to use my VAs and you refer somebody, you get $60 every two weeks from referring this client okay so now i get paid from identity iq um my identity iq you need identity iq to plug in with whatever whatever system you're using yeah, yeah. Exactly. so now in my in my own what's it called in my consultations i say hey you need to have identity iq in order to um do this consultation yeah we did okay. that too. So now, <laughs> yeah. so now i get five dollars per client mm-hmm. with identity iq a month yeah. So if you get 100 clients and each one of those clients sign up for Identity IQ, guess what? That's how much. Yeah, y'all do the math. You're going to get you're going to get all of that. OK, so now um, lead drag. If I go to the link in my bio for lead drag, it'd be half off every month. So that, that's my affiliate link right there. Mm-hmm. So that those are the three ways I run my, my credit repair business for free. So mm-hmm. the main thing for me, um, as far as credit repair, I like to retarget. So. I don't have any, any, anything in place to really, what could I say, really make sure that these clients are interested, like form or anything like that. I just have them directly put your email, put your name, put your phone number so we can retarget you. Even if you're not that interested, I can yeah. still retarget you. So yeah. I put them all in my funnel on lead dragon and retarget. I can send a mass text. I set up templates or I can have my VAs do it. I set up templates and simply retarget those clients. Or I can say, hey, if you want to do business credit, let's do a sale. You got $500 to um, to consult you on business credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I send a mass text and then three people will hit me back for $500. I lock those clients in just by retargeting. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's that easy. Yeah, I, I, really, I really have credit repair as it's really like a, like a side hustle to yeah. me. Okay. I, make, I make a ton of money from it, but it's still like a side hustle. It's not my main. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's what I can give y'all on the credit repair business. Just retarget, retarget these clients because one week they may have it, the next the next week they'll be ready. But if you're not marketing and they're not, you're not you're not in their face 24-7, they're gonna forget about you and go to the yeah. next person that they do see whenever they're ready. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah, yeah. So, you have you have to stay. That goes for any business. You have to stay yeah. in these people's face. If not, if you don't stay in these people's face, they're going to forget mm-hmm. about you. Okay, so if they constantly see you and they're not ready at this moment, next week if they see you, they're going to be okay. This who does credit repair? Even they they refer to people. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. Have a have an affiliate um program. So mm-hmm. if you bring me somebody, I give you a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. two hundred dollars. You know, mm-hmm. so y'all can set up something like that. And I, I get plenty of customers off of just word of mouth because yeah. you can have a referral um, system. Mm-hmm. People get paid. That can be a side hustle for somebody else who's bringing you clients. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But also you got to make sure your credit repair system on point to where you yeah, actually get results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you actually get results, your credit repair system going to market itself mm-hmm. when you get getting consistent results. Okay, so once you're doing people good work, they're going to go tell everybody. Mm-hmm. So that's how that's how I really keep my credit repair business turning. 
until, you know, I build the, the um, rental car business and push that to the side. And then I'm going to get back on the um, credit repair game. Okay. No. So retargeting, being top of mind, also affiliates. Okay. I love that. Love that. Okay. So we fixed the credit. We were, you know, getting cards and everything. Six months later, we get into the rental car space. Let's talk about your passion, your purpose, the <laughs> car rental. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's get, let's, let's talk about it, how you get into the game and all that. So I just, um, my first car I bought. So it is what happened. I was going back to college, but I, I came back on Christmas break and I never went back to college. Mm-hmm. But before I went back to college, my truck got repoed. Oh, so my people, my people had a truck for me and it got repoed. So now I'm like, how can I get back to college? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I had to get a car. So that's where the finance, me financing the car. That's why me finding the in-house finance hack. But that car was just for personal uses. Um, then I didn't go back to college, so I had to find a way to make that payment. So I um I, I was doing DoorDash and stuff with that car, but then I wanted a newer uh Camry, so I traded this car in. When I traded this car in, bro, I, they they paid off the car loan on my on my report. Mm. So I'm like, I kept this car for however long. I can't remember. I think it was six months. I kept that car for six months, and when I traded it in, oh now it's paid off on my on my credit report. Yeah. Okay. So that's how I'm gonna move up tiers. That's how I'm gonna go from the economy cars to the luxuries, the infinities, mm-hmm. the those cars. And then this time I'm gonna get to the to the Lambos. Yeah. Soon. Okay. So just by trading my car in. So now I traded that one car in and I got a newer 2018 Camry. So now I got this 2018 Camry. So now that that was my personal car. Okay. So then I went to go get a Prius. I went to go get a Toyota Prius. You know, Pushman Mitch. Yeah, yeah. So, so Mitch, he uh he used a Prius, right? And a Prius always has been a good car to uh, mm-hmm. me. Even like just seeing them, they're, they're big cars for saving gas. Just being online, you hear about it all the time about saving gas. So I went mm-hmm. to go get a Prius. Then when I went to go get this Prius, I co-signed for it into my business name. So my business is a primary, and then I co-signed it with my personal. So mm-hmm. now my personal credit has this 2018 Camry and this uh, 2016 Prius. Okay. My business credit has this 2016 Prius. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when I got this Prius, my registration and stuff didn't come in. So I couldn't put it on the app. I couldn't rent it out. Oh, oh, damn. So now at this point, I got two car notes that I'm paying. Yeah. I'm like, I can't afford it. Yeah. So now I have to rent out my personal car that I've been wanting forever just to have for myself, I did not. You can't have a personal relationship to your car in a rental car game. You just mm, can't. Mm. So I took this Camry and put this Camry on um, my personal car at the time. I put it on Turo. So now I'm driving around this Prius. So now the Prius information come in to where uh, the plates, the stickers and stuff like that, so I can put it on the app. Um, Back then, I didn't know you could put it on without all of the information, but now I do. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can put it on without that information, but I didn't know that. So now when the stuff came in for the Prius, I put both cars up. Now I'm sitting at home with no car. I can't go nowhere. I'm literally, my car, these are economy cars, so they're going 24-7. Yeah. So now I'm like, how can I get more cars? Like, I have no other choice. I have to get more cars. Joint ventures came in. Mm. But I'm going I'm to get to that. So okay. then, remember, I, I, I had this Prius. And I got it into my business name. I co-signed for it, yeah. right? Yeah. Remember when I told you my first Camry, when I traded in, it's paid off? On your credit, yeah. Oh, so guess what I do with this Prius? I took this Prius, traded it in. Now my business credit got a paid off auto loan. Mm-hmm. I don't need two years of tax returns yeah. to prove that I'm trustworthy. Yeah. Right? So now that I took this Prius, traded it in, I think I traded in for my Audi. So I got a, okay. I had an all I got an all way Audi that I traded this Prius in for right. So I went from a sixteen thousand dollar out I mean uh, Prius to this fifty thousand this fifty thousand this fifty thousand dollar Audi. I still have it right now. It's my personal car. It's wrapped. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's wrapped now. This is that car. What's it wrapped in? What color? It's a chrome. It's it's oh, a Oh, that's not hard. That's not yeah, hard. A, I might, I might have a, seen it scrolling through your page. I don't remember. Yeah, it's a yeah. color shifting. It's color shifting. It don't even have a solid color. Oh, uh, okay. But, um, now I got that. So now my business credit has a $50,000 auto loan, and I'm still yeah. co-signed to it personally. So I'm building my personal and my business credit. So yeah. my business credit moving up tiers, and I'm moving up tiers. Uh-huh. So now I still got a 2018 Camry. 
right? The Camry that I told you I traded the first one for. Mm -hmm. Now I got this car. So I went to trade that in for a $60,000 infinity. So I'm telling you how I'm moving up tiers. I'm yeah. telling you how I'm building my personal credit. I'm telling you how I'm building my uh, business credit all yeah. at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So I, I got that card. This is all within three weeks. Wow. All within three weeks. Wow. So I got this, this 2018 Camry. I traded it in for the Audi. Brand new Audi, seven miles off the lot. Okay, yeah. so then my credit report not showing. My credit report is not reporting any of these new cars that I just got. So mm -hmm. what did that tell you? Within 30 days, nothing shows up on your credit report. Oh, crazy. So one, I'm, re I'm removing these inquiries. Yeah. Okay. So while I'm removing these inquiries, I'm still figuring out who, what auto loan lender can I get another um, auto loan from? I hate Navy Fed pre-approved. Navy Fed approved me for, I think it was 25000 Then I went to go get a Nissan. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I got a Nissan, an Audi, A4, um, and now I got this, what is it, the Infinity. So now I pull all those cars up for rent. I rent them all out. Now, um, like I said, with the joint ventures, I'm sitting at home. I'm still sitting at home. I only have three cars up on the app. Mm -hmm. So I get into this Turo? Higher car? What are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Only Turo. Only Turo. Okay. All right, all cars right. were going so much, I really didn't need another platform to rent them out. Okay. So Good. I did strictly Turo. Turo is more short-term. Um, higher car is long-term. But Turo has better insurance. So I was like, I'm going to stay away from higher car right now. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I use Turo because of the extra insurance that it has. Mm higher -hmm. car does have insurance, but it's not as strong. So um, so now I get into the joint ventures. Okay, I get into the joint ventures. I'm getting cars left and right. How am I getting cars left and right off of joint ventures, off of other people bringing me cars? One, I'm on Instagram with it in Houston. Okay, now that I'm promoting that out there, I'm pushing it out there. People see me renting these cars out. I say, hey, if you want to add some cars to my fleet, some have some passive income, bring me a car. Mm. So I had one guy bring me five. Okay, he brought me five. We locked in the deal. Okay, boom, now I got five cars. I tell him, bro, I would drop your, uh, he was paying me 20%, okay, uh, gross income, meaning everything the car is made. Mm -hmm. So now he's paying me that. I say, hey, I'll break it down 5% if you bring me somebody else with three cars. Mm. Guess what? Five percent on gross income is is that's that's like five. I think I say like around five hundred dollars. Okay, for the for the cars that he had. Yeah. Um. So that's that's a good amount of money. Mm -hmm. So I told him that he brought five. He brought somebody with three more cars. Mm. This person that he brought brought me another car. So now I got four mm -hmm. from from this dude that he brought. Yeah. Then he brought me more. He brought me another one. He hit the Bank of America play. Brought me another one. Oh, okay. All right. Can you, can, got, can you run through the Bank of America play for people that don't know? I, I don't have it. I don't have it. Oh, I don't wow. have it. No. Oh, okay. They declined me. Bro, I get declined so much. Oh, wow. That okay. makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't have it. I just run it straight. Business credit, personal credit, and joint ventures. Oh, I, don't, okay. I wish I wish I could get it. If I could get it, I, I have 20 cars, 20 plus cars right oh, now. Okay. That's how I got it again. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard for me to get auto loans, gotcha. especially especially with that business credit. It's hard because of my yeah. age. That's, yeah, that's yeah, literally that what they tell me. That makes sense. They tell yeah. me your your credit isn't old enough, or you only had this car for six months. Oh, this yeah. and that. that. Is his age written all over the decline? Okay. But, but um, for those yeah. for the people that don't know the Bank of America business auto loan, basically you can get up to four auto loans in your business name. So that's a way that you can get in the game. Uh, I think most people listening, you're not going to be in a situation of like age and stuff. You know, we're talking to an anomaly right here. You feel me? So, yeah, I just want to go through that. But go ahead. Yeah, that, that play was for sure big. It's it's still big because that's how this dude brought me five cars. He used yeah. that play. Um, yeah. Of course, you can only do four. But he he already had one. Did the Bank of America play, brought me four more. So, um. Yeah, that's that's for sure how I got the ball rolling on the joint ventures. I, I got 10 cars just saw joint ventures itself. Sure. You see what I'm saying? So this guy that I tell that that the first guy brought, I tell him the same thing, bro. Five yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. We're going five percent lower if you bring me somebody with three or more cars. Mm -hmm. If you bring me somebody with one or two cars, that's no income for me. That's that's just wasted time. Bring mm -hmm. three or more and we can drop the five percent. He go get more people and just they just keep coming. It's a win-win. Yeah, for sure. So Definitely. you just set up your contracts. You got to set up those contracts. I'm going to give you all some game. All right. So 
these contracts, um, contracts and SOPs, standard operating procedures, these are what's going to structure your business, okay? You cannot run off of what you say. So, for example, if I have my room car business and we get in a disagreement, one day I may be feeling, okay, cool. I can, I can, um, I can take time out of my day to go get this tire fixed, okay? But if it's not a disagreement that I have to take time out of my specific specific time frame out of this day, if it's not in this contract, I can't do it, mm -hmm. okay? So my point is y'all have to go by these contracts and these SOPs on what, what your business um, structures. So like I said, one day I can be feeling like doing something. The next day I may not be feeling like doing something. I'm a human, right? Yeah. It's going to fluctuate day to day. Like mm -hmm. I can be feeling like doing this. I can't, I might not be feeling like doing it. That's why we have to go by these SOPs and these contracts. So I update my contract every time there's a conflict. I'm updating my contract. Updated, updated, updated. Even the contracts that I rent my cars out with, like this one right here, it's mm -hmm. a, um, this is my contract for rental cars, right? Uh -huh. So I'm constantly, every time something happens, I'm updating my SOPs, I'm um, updating my employees, I'm updating everything to make sure that I, me, as like I said, I'm an employee of the business at mm -hmm. this point, like right now. Yeah. I have to run by what my business says. My business is just paperwork. So I have me personally as an employee, I have to run by this paperwork. I don't run by what I say. I don't run mm -hmm. by what BR think or mm -hmm. how BR feel. Mm -hmm. I go by this piece of paper, and that's how y'all are going to keep the contract. I mean, the um the businesses intact to make sure everything is organized and, yeah. and perfected. Because without, if you're just running off of what you feel, it's going to be everywhere. Like that's what I. That's completely what I learned throughout this rental car business, and it's a this business is great to just learn how to run business in general. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, for sure, get those SOPs straight, get these contracts straight, and you wanna run by what your contract says, not by what you say. Mm. No, yeah. that's definitely, that's definitely a game. Did you have a specific situation that influenced that or did you see something happen with somebody else? Like where did that come from? It's just my business growing in general. Like okay. I, had, I have so many businesses, I have to have structure. Yeah. If I don't have structure, it wouldn't be where like this stuff wasn't wouldn't be where it's at right now. Yeah. But I can get I can give you an example with a rental car why why I really started taking these these rental car contracts serious. Like mm -hmm. I had a rental car contract, but I started locking down on this stuff. Um, especially with the with the credit repair contract, you do need contracts for the oh, credit. Definitely. Yeah. Because these these people will try to play you. Man. And then when they go back and read that contract. It's in there. You see what yeah. I'm saying? We're going about what this contract say. Mm -hmm. But with this with this one car, when I first started with the rental cars, I was doing a ton of private rentals, like a ton of them. I'm talking about cars going for three months, two months. Um, so when I got this Jeep, this Jeep was brand new to me. Um, I traded, no, no, actually I got this no PG with Ally. So okay. remember I told you I traded, I traded that Prius in. So now I gotta pay yeah. it off all the loan. So when I go to Ally, they see I got a paid off auto loan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No PG. Yeah. So now I got a Jeep. I took this Jeep, rented out to this lady. This lady lives in Dallas. I live in Houston. Like uh -huh. I rented out the car from Houston. So this four hours away. This lady lives in Dallas and she booked the car in Houston. This lady took my car from Houston to Dallas and couldn't bring it back. So she needed somebody to follow her, right? To bring yeah. the car back. This lady will pay me. Like, say today, if she owes the payment, she will keep the car for, like, two more days, and then she'll pay. So now it's just, like, the payments were overlapping. So it was getting hard, it was getting complicated for me to really keep up with it. I did have a kill switch. When I killed the car, that's what okay. she would pay. Yeah. That's what she would pay. Yeah, yeah. I had protection, for sure. Okay. I most definitely had protection. So I would kill the car, and that's when she would pay. But it's just, it's just a whole headache, like, doing that stuff. So now... I put in my contract. Okay, anything you do, that's um. Let me let me think of an example. So I have a rim rat, either a rim rash fee, a speeding fee, um, a a window chip. Of course, she she got a window chip on there. Just anything, anything I want to put in this contract to take your deposit, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Once I put in this contract, so um, this lady had a she she brought back the toll. It was like. Hundred dollars in tolls, wow. cracked windshield. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? 
I forgot what else. Oh, rim rash. She had rim rash on my tire. So I took all of that. Um, all of that was in the contract. I had to put that stuff in the contract, which it already was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kind of locked down on that part. I took her deposit. She didn't get her $500 back. Um, I paid the tolls with that. I paid the windshield and fixed the um, tire with that. But um, something in there, I put, like, don't go out of town with my cars or I can take a deposit. So mm-hmm. I won't. If they do take it out of town, I won't say nothing until they get back. That's mm-hmm. a, that's a deal for y'all. So don't okay. don't charge don't charge these people while they're out with your car. Charge them when they get back with your car because yeah. if you do, they'll try to do something with it. I do have a situation where somebody stole my car in my face, like literally. Wow. Um, but yeah, we can get to that if you want. Yeah, I, I I want to. <laughs> you really you really got to structure your contract. Like I said, I run by my contracts and my SOPs. I don't run by, by what BR think. I'm an employee for Aruba. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, you can't run by emotions. That's all you're going to be running by. You bit, you, your business, your clientele going to be horrible. Mm. So you don't want to do that. You got to run with some structure. Okay, definitely. Okay, that's definitely some game for the people starting or people that have already been doing it. So mm-hmm. sometimes some people overlook location. You're in Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, can we talk about the research you did? Like, what was the methodology between you doing the cars? I think Ford Mustang convertibles are good out there. Like, what kind of cars mm-hmm. are good out there so any car is good out here in houston but okay. you you got to keep in mind that you have a hot season you have a cold season mm. a cold season is approaching a hot season is also here the summer is a hot season any car is gonna run luxury mm. economy uh excited those are all mm. gonna do great mm-hmm. when it comes to hurricane season those luxuries gonna be sitting in the garage the exotics gonna be sitting in the garage so what you can do if you have exotics, I don't I don't think you should do this with luxury, but with exotics, um, send them out to somewhere that's hot, Cali, um, Miami. Miami. Those are the main two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so ship your exotics down there. But if you got luxuries, those luxuries are gonna be sitting. <laughs> luxuries are, are already my worst nightmare. I don't like luxury cars. The only reason I got them is to build my credit report. Mm-hmm. But luxuries do not run out as much as economies. Econ- mm-hmm. With that being said, economies make more money. So when you got a hot season, everything is gonna run. Um, so here in Houston, it's it's a hot market regardless of what car you got. Um, but you just have to keep in mind that those luxuries are not gonna be running. The exotics are not gonna be running when it's raining and just bad weather. See what I'm saying? But those economy cars are gonna be running. When yeah. I say economy, I'm talking about Hondas, Honda Accords, uh, Toyota Prius, Toyota. Toyota Camrys, um, Nissans. What else? Kias, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Those cars are going to run regardless of what the weather is. OK, so that's that. Um, Really, you don't have to worry about your car not rented out in Houston unless it's a cold season or mm-hmm. hurricane season. Um, Those those luxury cars you want to stay away from. OK, so economy is going to run out. You're going to make money with luxury. You're going to make money with exotics. Let's say someone's just starting. Would you automatically recommend that they do economy? That they should do luxury? Should they get multiple vehicles? Like, what would you recommend for someone just starting? Yeah, so a lot of people come to me and say, "Hey, should I get this this um, what's it, Mercedes? Should I get something that is luxury mm. because they think they make more money?" Please don't get nothing uh, luxury because mm. those luxury cars don't rent. People don't need luxury cars like they need economy. So the luxury cars can be rented out ten days out of the month. 15 days out of the month. Why the economy could be going a whole month. So you're going to make more money with the economy and it's more passive. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're not paying for car washes and uh, not as much maintenance on the economy. And not as much maintenance on the economy. And you don't have that many car washes you got to do. Um, it's, it's just more whole, the whole economy side is just way more passive too. Mm-hmm. So um, that's what I would say on that part. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know you said you're an employee of the business. Can we talk about the systems with how you're running as far as like car washes, maintenance and things like that? Are you at the forefront doing everything? Do you have a team? Let's talk about it. Okay. So right now I am working on a warehouse. So that's when I was starting yeah. building my team. But right now it's just, it's just me and my dad. That's oh, okay. it. Um, but I do most of the work. Like I said, I have mostly economy cars. I do have plenty of luxury, but I have more economy. So these cars really are going. So I'm not doing that much work. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing a lot of work, but it's not as much as if I just had straight luxury cars. 
um, because he's kind of me stay going. So yeah, it's it's really just me, Toro. Um, I have I have the private rental locked down too, so I know what to do in the case of an accident. I know how to uh, verify the client's insurance. I have my contracts on lock because of the past situations that I had. Yeah, my contracts are straight. My deposits. Um, like it's an SOP, standard standard operating procedure. Like I mm-hmm. I have. Okay, step one, I do this. Step two, step three, step four, as mm-hmm. far as the private rentals. And then Toro is Toro. It's it's already a platform for you where it's set up and organized. So yeah. as far as the online um stuff like that, and I'm working on a website, but as far as the online stuff, that's that's good. And then the for, the forefront is me. Okay. I'm washing the car. I, I'm taking the car to get washed, stuff like that. Um, I'm gassing them up and maintenance, but these cars barely need maintenance. So that's how I run it. And then every now and then, if I don't have time, I tell my dad, my cousin, hey, can you handle such and such at 630? All right, cool. Um, I get it washed beforehand. They'll come mm-hmm. in. They'll come and meet the client or I'll get a lockbox, um, put the lockbox up, have the client just punch in the numbers, get the get the key. Um, or I can unlock the car from my phone. Um, I can lock the car from my phone if it, if it doesn't have... Um, or I'll, I'll put the key in the lockbox if it doesn't have that unlock lock feature on my phone. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I run those right there. So yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So a lot of people they look at social media, you know, they see the Turo stuff, they see Pushman Mitch, like you mentioned earlier. They see all these people posting stuff, and they just assume everything is sweet. Let's talk about the time that you know someone tried to steal your car. They, you said they tried or they did. What happened? Oh, they most definitely tried. Nah. Okay. We, All right, let's, they, let's talk about it. Let's talk about we it. We locked these cars down. Yeah. But yeah, um, in these businesses, regardless of what business it is, you're going to need customer service because these clients, they they will do anything, especially with the rental cars. Rental cars is your possession. They it's it's a mobile, it's a mobile um basically piece of money. Like it's you, they can take this car to Africa and ship it to Africa if they wanted to. They can do whatever they want with these cars yeah. when you're not watching them. When you have so many, you're not worried about one. You're not worried about two. Mm-hmm. You're, worried about, you're worried about all of them, but at the same time, you got to know you're in a rental car business. So mm-hmm. you protect yourself up front. Mm-hmm. So this is what happened. Um, let me, this, this was a, this was like, what, two, a month or two ago? Wow. So a renter, Sunday, right? Yeah. Not this Sunday, but it was it was on a Sunday, right? Um, like I said, they got an unlock feature from my phone. Mm-hmm. I locked it from my phone also. So the client, I was down the street, I was like 10 minutes down the street away from the car. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the client dropped off the car and you're supposed to put the key in the car so I yeah. can lock it. Uh-huh. They would tell me, hey, we are I locked the um, I put the key in the car and the car is good to go. You can lock it. Okay, cool. I'm 10 minutes down the road. I get to the car, bro. I unlock the car. The car is locked. I yeah. unlock the car from my phone. I look in there. The key isn't in it. Mm. I'm like, I was telling the dude, I was like, dude, the key isn't in here. Maybe you took it on accident. I wasn't thinking he he did anything. Well, I'm going to tell y'all what he did with it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dude, the key isn't in here. So what's going on? May, I'm like, check, check everything. And it is not my car. It's a joint ventures car. So I told him, I'm like, bro, I don't know where the key is. He doesn't know where the key is. I called the dude, we're calling the dude, we're texting the dude. He's not saying nothing. Well, well, he was saying something, but he was like, I don't know where the key is. He mm. kept telling me, I don't know where the key is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, he's swearing up and down, up and down. He put it in there where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in there. Mm. Okay. So this was Sunday. Yeah. Come Wednesday. So from Sunday to Wednesday, we're waiting to see if the key will pop up somewhere. Either I find it, he finds it, uh, the renter finds it in his luggage or something. Mm-hmm. So it never came up. Come Wednesday, I got a car wash and I come back. And it's a green Tahoe spray hand spray painted now. Pitch black windows. I cannot see who is in it. I can't see who is in this car. It's a Tahoe, bro. It's a big truck. So I don't know yeah. who's in the car. Yeah. It can be people stupid people with guns in there i don't know yeah so i pull up and they're sitting in the parking lot and i'm like okay this is weird so i get my little yeah so mm-hmm. then i'm like 
bro, something not right. So before I backed into the thing, I, I thought about it before I backed into the spot because I keep my cars at a, at a parking lot. So before I backed in, I'm like, Some, something not right. It's just not sitting right with me. Mm. So then I back in. The dude with the with the Tahoe was in front of me. He comes and parks to my left, okay? Mm. The car is to my right. He parked to my left. He get out, walk to the car, start taking pictures. It's not the renter. It's somebody else. It's mm. a big, big black dude. It's mm-hmm. not the renter. Mm-hmm. He's taking pictures of the BMW. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's a, he's a renter. He's coming to pick up the car. Then I think nobody's nobody's renting the car. Yeah. Okay. So the dude get in the car. I'm like, oh, oh man. God. I'm like, okay. Okay, this dude got the key. Okay, yeah. he didn't click. Okay, so now he got the key. So now I call the dude. I'm like, kill the car. Like, kill it. The dude mm-hmm. with the key is right in front of me. The car isn't stolen at this time. So he was like, okay, I can't kill it because I'm not next to my laptop. Okay, so I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going to just call the police. I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm going to just call the police and mm-hmm. tell them this dude got my key. I found who got my key. So then I'm on the phone with them, and then the dude with the that was driving a Tahoe, he pulled around the corner. It's like a wall right here where the cars are lined up. Uh-huh. He pulled around the corner and he got out, and I I barely saw the back of the the uh, Tahoe peeking out. So then I saw him looking around the corner. So I, I thought he was looking at me. Yeah. Oh, somebody got out and took the BMW. I'm like, yeah. but, okay, but but at this time I'm on the phone with the cops, so I I. The way it's set up, the parking lot is like an island. Okay, uh-huh. you drive out one way, go to the left, which is where the dude with the Tahoe went. Uh-huh. I went to the yeah. left. So I was like, I'm gonna follow, him, but I'm gonna go around the other way. Okay. Right. Yeah. At this time, I'm on, I'm on the phone with the police. Yeah. So then I'm telling them, hey, the dude with the uh with the BMW key, he has my key, right? He he's here. But when I go around, I get at a light, bro. I'm on the phone with the cops, and I look in my rearview mirror. Guess who's behind me? The BMW. So I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, they just took my car. I was like, okay, they officially took my car. Because remember, yeah. I just called them to let them know that they had the key. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They have my key. They, they, they have the car. Like, they're yeah. driving behind me. So he cut through the parking lot to do with the BMW because it was a light. He was stuck uh-huh. at a light. So uh-huh. he went through the parking lot and got behind the dude, the Suburban. So by the time I came around, guess who I meet head to head? It's me. In the uh in this big old suburban, and then it's the dude with the with the green Tahoe and uh-huh. then the BMW behind him because he cut through the parking lot. Oh, man. So now we head to head. So I kind of yeah. got over to kind of stop him. He honking his horn, then he rolled his window down. I'm like, oh my God, I ain't know if he was gonna start shooting or what. Yeah. I ducked and kept driving, right? And they just speeding, they just speeding. So then I called, I hung up with the police, I gave them all the information. They was asking whole bunch of unnecessary questions yeah so i finally got off the phone with them then i called my guy back i was like okay yeah they they officially just took the car like i just seen him right here in front of my face take the car so now after after that happened the dude he was like okay cool i'm gonna kill switch it whenever i can so now so now i call the cops and say um no the cops called me back Mm -hmm. so now they're trying to get all the information on the guys like Cause we have a track, we have multiple trackers on them. So now I'm on the phone with the cops and I call, call my rental car guy. I merge them with the cops. Mm-hmm. Now the ladies on the phone, we give me every single street that these dudes are hitting. It's like three mm-hmm. second delay. So we give every single street. They hit every single street. Mm-hmm. So um, the lady was like, okay, we're dispatching helicopters. We're dispatching unit 15. We're dispatching whatever. Okay. Yeah. They, they, he giving them the directions. The we we so it's a whole police chase while we're on the phone. We're, get, yeah. we're telling the cops where to go. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're literally chasing the dude while we're on yeah. the phone. Okay, so yeah, so the the renter gave the key to somebody to come. It's a whole organized crime, like uh-huh. whole organized, like bro. They was organized. If I wasn't sitting right. there, I would have noticed the car was going like quick because I'm out there damn near all day. Yeah, so. I would I would have seen them um I would have seen the car missing within like at least 20 minutes. So we would have still found it. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, he took the key, gave it to somebody that came to steal it, came to steal it. So I had to go pick up the car. We went to go pick it up, and it was like trenches, bro. I'm mm-hmm. talking about trenches. They didn't find the dude that stole it. They didn't find the dude that was in this 
Oh, bright green, yeah. bright green suburban that's spray painted. They didn't find them yeah. for whatever reason when they have helicopters. Um, I mean, like it's not hard to miss. It's like an olive green army colored car, a big old Tahoe. You can't see it from these helicopters that y'all got. It's kind of weird to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they didn't catch the dude. We just went there. We got the car. I got in the car. Gave the police the information. So then, when I'm giving the information. I'm looking at the dude Turo account, the dude from Houston. So I'm like, why are you running a car from Houston? Then I look, well, it's, it's nothing wrong with that. But when you got six trips in Houston, okay, now you're looking for somebody car to hit. Yeah. That got that got they got the system that you was looking for. Y'all, y'all like our system, so y'all can take our car. Okay, so boom, that was that. I was giving the police the information. So now this was Wednesday. Okay, I think come Friday, right? On mm-hmm. Friday, no, 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 Saturday. Okay. I went down there at seven o'clock. I checked the car out, right? I, I was taking pictures to check it out. A car to my left started up. So I'm like, why is a dude out here seven o'clock in the morning? Right. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that's weird. Okay. Uh-huh. Somebody out here at seven o'clock in the morning in the morning starting their car. It's a parking lot with businesses. No, no, nothing is open. So at this time, I'm, I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, somebody just started their car. Do what I had to do. And mind you, I'm not old enough to have a troll platform. Mm. So the dude face that's on there is not me. Mm-hmm. So if they see me, they wouldn't know it's my stuff. Yeah. Right. So I take the car, I take the pictures, check the car out, whatever. I come back at 12 p.m. So 12 noon, I come out there. The same car sitting there running. Really? So I'm in my Audi. So I just sit there. I knew something was weird. I knew yeah. it. I knew something was weird. So I just sit there in the Audi, put my, my flashes on, act like I was on the phone. Mm-hmm. I was right behind the dude. So he seen me. Mm-hmm. So I put the flashes on. I sat there. I did not get out because I knew something was weird. So I just sat there. The dude backed out of the spot and got behind this trash can where it was more space. Mm-hmm. This dude got out the car and went. I couldn't see who it was. I could see his skin tone. That's it. And it was the same skin tone as dude. That's all I could see. I couldn't see nothing yeah. else. Um, he, he had pitch jack, his black windows. He got out the car, went to the back seat. And got out comforters. He started getting out comforters and pillows and putting them in his trunk. So I'm like, dude, I'm like, something not right. So I started reporting. My rearview mirror right here, he behind me. Mm. So I'm reporting through my rearview mirror. Mm-hmm. He faced the camera. I pull out my iPad with his profile. I pull up his picture. And I'm sitting here reporting his face. So I'm like this. I'm looking at his face in person and on the, on the mm-hmm. uh, camera. I'm like, bro, this is the same dude. <laughs> Like this, this the dude that rented my car from this last Sunday. Dude. Wait, yes. yeah, 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 from last Sunday. This is dude that rented my car. So now I'm like, I'm mind blown. I'm like, yeah. okay, now this dude for sure set it up. I had a feeling he set it up, but now I know for sure. I caught him on camera. Yeah. So then I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure. Okay, because he he a little ways away, and I'm recording from my rearview mirror. I'm looking at my phone. So then, um. He get back in the car. I still didn't get out at this point. He get in the car. He drive off, and I'm still recording. I'm trying to get the license plate, bro. The license plate not even on the car. So I'm like, okay. So yeah, it's him. Why are you hiding your license plate? So the license plate was in the back windshield, upside down. You're telling on yourself at that point. Yeah. So now I'm like, okay, that's official. That's this dude, the, the renter that claimed he lost the key. That's the dude that set up everything. Set up so everything. I, yeah. I caught him. And they don't even know these are my cars. They just sit in there doing the stuff right in front of my face and don't even know. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the funny part about it. But yeah, yeah bro, these, these clients, these people would do anything and yeah. don't even be smart about it. Yeah. But they could have been smart about it. But I I don't know. Yeah, nah, that's, yeah. that's definitely that was a crazy, crazy. story. Like it, it felt like a movie because it kept going for days and days yeah. and days. Like, definitely. Stuff just kept plugging in and connecting. So yeah. it's crazy, yeah. So they they actually watch, they're still watching my cars. I haven't seen them in a while, but as you can see, the dude sleeping in the car, they they most definitely want that car. Yeah, they, they still have the key. They still have the key to the car, but we got everything reprogrammed, so that key is dead. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. They can't even take they can't take the car anymore. But yeah, bro, that that's a crazy story when they tried to wow. steal my car. Yeah, yeah, nah, damn, that's wild. That's wild. <laughs> that's wild as hell. So, so yeah. I mean, I guess where we go from here in the interview. <laughs> what kind of piece of advice would you have for someone that's trying to get into the game that just thinks, you know, 
stuff is sweet. I mean, besides the story you just told, like yeah. how do you prepare for that kind of stuff? So really, really, you just have to expect it. When you expect all of this stuff, it, it can't phase you. Like okay. you have to know that's that's part of the game. It like yeah. anything, if a car gets stolen, if a car get wrecked, one of my my, my um infinity that I got, the sixty thousand dollar car, it got completely wrecked. Like I'm talking okay. about twenty thousand dollars less um is worth. So yeah, I have like when that happened, I was like, okay, cool. I was literally laughing about it. Cause mm-hmm. you can get paid off of that. I was literally laughing about it, like, bro, all right, it's cool, whatever. Um, it's gonna happen. Like I was expecting it to happen at some point. So mm-hmm. yeah, when you expect bad stuff to happen and it actually happened, it doesn't phase you at all. And that's mm-hmm. that's how y'all gonna keep going. Just expect this bad stuff to happen. Okay. That's that's how I would say I deal with that type of adversity. Okay, dope, 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 definitely. All right, before we even wrap up the episode, I just have a couple more questions. Mm-hmm. So number one, where do you see yourself five years from now? So five years from now, you're gonna be 25 do you still see yourself working directly in the business i mean you're gonna have a warehouse obviously mm-hmm. um so like what where do you see yourself as far as a car rental space as far as the car rentals i see if i could do this in a year and a half i'm uh, bro yeah we in every state exotics economies everything mm-hmm. economy cars of course gonna be paying for the for the higher end cars and these economy cars aren't going to be rented out on a platform they're going to be more so out to Uber drivers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So they won't even be in my possession at all. Mm-hmm. It's basically like a lease. Like I'll be leasing these cars to somebody. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's how I'm going to keep those economy cars out of my face. And we're just going to have Lamborghinis, Bentleys, and every single state. Like you, you'll see my brand, the Rubo uh, Reynolds Houston. Mm-hmm. That brand is going to be in Miami, um, New York, Cali, of course, Houston. Of course, Houston's going to be the, the headquarters. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, as far as the rental cars, I'm talking about multi, multi, multi millions in the rental car mm-hmm. game. Yeah. So like I said, it's been a year and a half since I dropped out. So if I can do that in a year and a half, I can't. I really can't imagine, to be honest, what five years from now is going to look like. Mm-hmm. I don't even think about it. I just run mm-hmm. and know I'm moving at, at the right pace. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just by not letting anything phase me at all. Yeah, so I can't be slowed down because, like I said, I'm expecting anything bad to happen. Anything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no matter what it is, I'm expecting. It, so yeah, okay, definitely. So, so I got like four more questions. This is a quick mm-hmm. round, and okay. then we're gonna pretty much wrap it up. You ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, number one, what do you do for fun when you're not, you know, going crazy in a car rental space? On my game. I really don't do nothing for <laughs> I really don't. I barely go out. Like, my friends, they be forcing me. That's the only time I go out. They'll force okay. me to go out. Um, But other than that, I won't go anywhere. Um, I'll probably go eat somewhere, go go play um, football somewhere, because I, mm-hmm. I am an athlete. So mm-hmm. we'll go play football. I really just hop on a game. I'll go look at exotic cars, mm-hmm. um, get on YouTube. I really don't have free time. Mm. So yeah. Um, I don't I don't like I don't like taking away from my goals. I feel that you know what I'm saying? that time. Yeah. I don't like taking time away from what I got going on. I feel that. Mm. Are your friends on the same type of time as far as you know the business and all that? Most definitely not. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. So I guess it's kind of a release from the day to day when you're hanging out. Yeah. With. Okay. I yeah. Like yeah. But I do I do have close people in the entrepreneurship space though. Okay. But just not they older. Who to have for older? No, nah, they were the same, same age. age. Oh, okay, that's dope. Okay, all right. Yeah, same age. So in in this field, you'll find other people that's that's like I know millionaires, multi millionaires my age. Yeah, okay, yeah, just no, I've been in this field. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you just but it's like you got to be in a space to attract that, mm-hmm. right? You're not you're not gonna be outside of the entrepreneurship space attracting these people. These, yeah these high level individuals at 20 years old because they're out here yeah no most definitely yeah it's, it's teenagers even going crazy yeah it's, yeah it's babies out here rich like yeah stupid millionaires yeah definitely. it's out here but yeah they are hard to find but when you're in that space yeah and, and you're doing your thing they're gonna come to you and they're gonna see you acknowledge you for sure 
Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. Our next question, what would you say is your, if you have one, what's your favorite resource when it comes to car rentals? Push me and Mitch. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's, that's the only person. Um, to be honest, I only got his course. I, I won one for free. I bought the I bought the regular course and I got the deluxe for free. Um, that's about the only person I really learned from the rental car game. And I learned from myself a lot because mm -hmm. I'm younger than anybody teaching this game. Mm -hmm. Anybody teaching this rental car game, I'm younger than them. So they cannot teach me on anything. Um, as far as when it when it comes to age restrictions, as far as credit and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And clients, um, clients try to play with me all day. Like just because I'm younger, I feel they, they yeah. try to play. They play yeah. all, especially with the credit, especially with the joint, bro. They're going to try to play with me. Mm. But these older cats can't teach me that because they weren't getting it at this age. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can teach any age, but they, they, I feel like those older folks, they really like push me and Mitch. They really target the the higher um, age bracket around around their age, right? Mm -hmm. I don't feel like. He teaches me the basics, but like I said, when it comes to age, bro, it's just a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn all of that stuff myself. Mm -hmm. I have to learn a whole different side of myself. So yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so the the the, the third question: If you could change one thing about the black community as far as financial literacy, credit, car rentals, whatever, what would it be and why? It would be to, if I could change anything, I would say, like, stop working a nine to five because hmm. I think about this all the time. I will help them get out of the nine to five and just make money for themselves mm -hmm. because I look at it, it's so bad because inflation, it'll shoot up, bro, but they'll still be making the same type of paycheck. Yeah, which it all makes sense. Yeah, so I'll be like, bro, that, that don't make no sense. That's crazy. So I would most definitely push people to become not even an entrepreneur just to have just to make some type of to sell some type of other skill that they have like mm. whatever it is everybody has a skill mm -hmm. yeah like everybody wasn't born just to work a nine to five retire get the little paycheck the retirement paycheck and, and pass away like it's you have more than that your purpose is more than that so that's probably what i would try to get out to the okay. to the black community and have them actually Stop working for that man. That man, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I would most definitely influence. Okay. Our last question, maybe um, this could be optional. This is your chance. Is there a question that people do not ask you that you would want to talk about? I know you've been on different podcasts and stuff like that. It's your, it's your chance to, you know, like, I, damn, I wish people asked me this. You know what I'm saying? Uh... Not really, no. Not people really. ask me everything. Okay. <laughs> they don't care that they ask me anything. No, nah, it's, it's nothing really. Okay. What do you think? What do you think? Is that something you um, had in mind that you, that you thought? No, nothing at all. I, ju I just always like to, you know, give the guest that opportunity. Because I don't know. my You know, we're not mind readers. It could be something in your head like, damn, I wish people asked me more about my struggle with this. I wish people asked me more about, you know, X, Y, Z when it comes to car rentals. I can say probably uh, what actually goes on behind that Instagram camera because all that stuff look good on Instagram. You see what I'm saying? It's a highlight reel. Instagram, yeah. social media in general is a highlight reel. Most definitely. But I wish people ask me instead of how do you get this car? How do you do this business credit? How do you do that as far as business? What actually goes on behind the scenes? Mm. That's, yeah, that's something I would that I would want people to know. People don't ask me that. What's actually what actually are the downfalls that happen behind the scenes? Like I could say, I didn't been declined for over probably twenty credit, no, fifty credit cards, twenty mm. auto loans. Mm. I've been trying to get a Tesla since they came out. Oh man, can't get a Tesla for whatever reason. It's just a whole bunch of stuff, like just day to day stuff. Having four businesses have to run all four by myself. It's a whole bunch of stuff that comes with it. To where if I can see if a person isn't prepared for this type of stuff. I can see why you can quit and go back to the yeah. five. Because yeah. this stuff is not easy. Yeah. It's not, bro. It's different when it when you are an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, definitely. So yeah, that's something I would want people to ask me what actually goes on day to day as far as rental car business, credit repair, Airbnb, and teaching this game. Mm. So yeah. 
Okay, definitely. Definitely appreciate your time. We didn't even get into the Airbnb, maybe for a separate interview, but appreciate yeah, your yeah, time, bro. Sure. Yeah, yeah, can you tell the people where they can find you? Yeah, just hit me up on Instagram at BRTCEO. All my social media is BRTCEO. That's B-R-T-H-E-C-E-O. I do have a mentorship. It's a thousand um, life-changing information. I have a mm-hmm. class coming up. I don't know when you'll post this video, but I have a class coming up this month on the 20th. We will be reselling the, the uh, it's a master class. So it's June 20th, you said? What is it? Is it's June? Yeah, June 20th. Yeah. Okay, I know we're going to post it way later, but, you know, go yeah, is there going to be a replay or something? Or what's, what's yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's okay. Like, it's three days. It's okay. day one, day two, day three, and you're going to be able to buy each day separately. So gotcha. if you just want day three, you can buy day three. And that's gotcha. that's when this video will post. Yeah, they'll be ready to buy the replays. So gotcha. um they can buy that's that'll be my rental car course right there. Okay. So um yeah, you can I have my links in my bios if y'all want to go to the identity IQ link, you want to get the lead dragon so mm-hmm. you can get your discount. It's all in my bio, the ebooks, in my bio, everything in my bio on Instagram. All right. All yes, right. sir. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Y'all heard it. But that being said. Y'all have a blessed one. Yes, sir.